Hello, everyone, and welcome to the show. It is Local Chat, episode 152. I'm your host, Will Crosby. Joining me this week is one Kyle Bailey. I'm here, and I'm ready for Christmas, I think. No, not really. I'm poor. I'm definitely not ready for Christmas. Speaking of someone who's not ready for Christmas and is also poor, Jake Terrio. <laughs> You're correct. I'm usually Everyone only one except of Ian. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, folks, we're here uh, to talk about video games. We're here to give you the tips to make money tomorrow. Um, you're going to want to invest in Jake's paperback book printing. Um, Ooh, it's through this great website. Called, <laughs> it's called Amazon. Um, his friend, the, Jeff Bezos. Bezos bucks. <laughs> uh, no, we're here to talk about video games and all things important. Um, I put a little chit chat section here. This isn't the usual bit where I say chit chat section. We don't talk about the chit chat section, but since there's like barely any news this week because it's almost Christmas and other than a giant, massive looming Spider-Man thing, um, there's not much to talk about. Uh, so I, in the, in the chit chat section, I put a little holiday gaming plans. Um, I know we have game of the year coming up in January. Uh, and you've got to get through some of those last minute games uh, to make sure they get on your list or you can correctly tell Ian why they're bad um, what are what are we playing this next these next two weeks let's do two weeks what are we playing who wants to start Kyle Kyle wants to okay start. well uh, <laughs> I I didn't but I will uh, okay so I played uh, a good majority of the games uh, that are on the list already more so than last year's list. I really had to catch up last year to like make sure I didn't miss anything this year. Mm. I'm not quite as worried, but I did just start Alan Wake too. So that's going nice. to be, you know, a good like 20 to 30 hours, I think, but I don't think it'll take me that long because one, it's already very good and I'm already very much drawn into it more so than I was in the first game, which I liked the first game a lot, but I played, you know, a decade after it had come out and i think a lot of the trappings of that genre and style of game making back in the day do not hold up quite as well mm -hmm. um but it was still very cool uh very uh very i could see why it has since become iconic um and then just looking at the list um uh battle bit remastered i know i have to do uh, ian says four hours so i gotta do at least one and then um <laughs> Uh, Roto Force, I have started playing, much to Jake's uh, happiness, I think. Um, Baldur's Gate 3, I already have like 30 to 40 hours in that, but I want to finish it just so that I can say I, I completed it. Um, Armored Core 6, I've done like an hour, but I need to I need to just Beat do Baltans. a little bit more. To, no, I did that. Um, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't have to have After all of this come into one place to support my to support me beating that. No, no, sorry, more more than an hour. I've, I I need to do like another hour okay, to, like, to get up to. Yeah. Get He's like, yeah. <laughs> I've been using cheats the entire <laughs> time. I've been <laughs> running Armored Core Six. <laughs> no. Um, uh, I'm okay. Sea of Stars. I need to do Dave the Diver. I already have an hour in, so I just need to do that. I'm not going to play Pikmin 4, I don't mm. think. I'm just, I, I can't afford it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, and Robocop, I, I beat the demo, which I'm saying is enough to experience what you have planned for that for talking about and defending that game. I liked it a lot. Um, and then Gordy and the Monster Moon, I have no idea what that is, so I will play it. But yeah, that's most of most everything else I've I've played. So I'm pretty excited and that I don't have to like cram everything into like a week. So I've got a little bit of breathing room. But what about you, Jake? Uh, I will also be using the break to catch up on some <laughs> of the goatee stuff, but specifically the Switch titles, which I think are Fire Emblem and Mario Wonder and Legend of Zelda. Um, so I will be using the break to play hopefully all three but whichever one probably catches my attention the most. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I um I forgot about Fire Emblem was on there. Maybe I should grab that. And Wonder, I completely forgot about as well. Uh, I, like you, Kyle, I need to finish up Baldur's Gate 3. I keep thinking about it. 
uh, and I need to hurry up and do that. And then uh, System Shock I picked up, and I've been playing through that, which has been really fun. Uh, and then um, I forget what other one I had. Oh, oh Resident Evil uh, 4 Remake I want to at least get through for a little bit. I was hesitant, or I was bold, almost put Octopath Traveler 2 uh, down to play uh, for possible Goaty, and I was like, I don't, I can't, I don't have that kind of time in my life right now. So I it's a big investment. Octopath, yeah. Octopath Travelers one and two both take a really long time to get rolling. Yeah. So I I, I really want to play it, and I was tempted recently. I was like, oh, do I want to play it on Switch or Steam Deck? And I really don't care either one. But um, there was like it was down to like thirty bucks on Steam or. Or I think it was like Green Man Gaming or whatever. And I was like, oh, I should buy it. And then I didn't because I'm not anywhere close to being uh, in the uh, availability to play that. So not going to be doing that. Um, great holiday gaming plans. Super fun. Our families will love it as we ignore them and play video games. Uh, moving on to games we've been playing this week. I'm going to go quick because I have quick games to talk about. System Shock, as I already said, I've been playing the remake uh, it's really well done. I have beaten the first... It's like... It's weird. I played System Shock 2, and I love that game. And also, if you guys have played Bioshock, very similar, where you're, like, clearing those areas. But in System Shock and System Shock 2, it's levels of a space station that you're going between uh, and back through and everything. So I beat the medical wing that you start in. Uh, and it's great. It feels really good. There's this... Um, for the melee weapons, you can, like, wind up like a bat and kind of hit them in the head and then if you if you hold back the bat and complete the swing and then hold it again on the other side he'll like uh, faster swing back if you like time it right so you can whack these mutants uh in the head twice and they go down um the puzzles are really fun the it also looks fantastic when you take the berserk pill or chip or whatever the you start seeing the original game's sprites in like your uh in your vision they like appear and stuff so it's a nice like little nod to the original um but yeah it's fun it looks really good it's scary as all heck um because everything's quiet it's like it's i mean yeah it's just like it's not inherently scary like there's scary vibes but you end up scaring yourself when you enter a room and it's not the over the top like mutant coming after you it's a quiet mutant and you maybe didn't see them until you turn around and you go, holy crap, what is that? And they hit you and you kind of like jolt and move your keyboard and mouse everywhere and don't know what happened. It's happened to me more than once. and It's really annoying. Um, but at least the game's fun. So I like Immersive Sims and this is the grandpappy of most of them. Uh, so it, it's a fun, fun uh, game to go through. I remember Secondly, when, when... Oh, sorry. Oh, no, go. I was go. going to add to that just really quick. Um, I remember when it came out, I was wondering if it was like, is it a remaster or is it just a complete ground up remake? Like, what what is it? Because people were complaining like, oh, like they didn't do anything to they basically did not change the gameplay at all. As far as like what what the difference is from the original to now, it's basically just a visual upgrade. And I know people were annoyed by that. And I was confused because I thought that that was the whole point. But. Yeah, that, that confuses me as well. Uh, it is com- a complete... Uh, I mean, it is, in a sense, remaster. It's the exact same game, looks better, um, plays better, feels better, all that sort of stuff. Um, I would put it, and this is getting to the argument of remake, remaster, which I'm not going to rip open. It is also a remake in the sense of they're obviously not using really any of the original stuff, I don't think. So they had mm. to put it in a new engine and stuff because of its age. Um, but other than that, I think they just, it's like they copied out of one program and pasted it in the other. Um, I believe everything is exactly the same as far as gameplay wise. And I think, I think Resident Evil made that issue now where they can no longer just use remake remaster because Resident Evil did remakes, but completely changed the game and the Final Fantasy remake, they like ruined the usage of the term now so it's just like people expect way more and when they're not clear they're like why didn't you change anything um i i I can never remember how did john carpenter describe dead space oh 
re uh, I can't remember what word to use, but it was a new re one. Yeah, the it was like recollection or something. Um I uh I've never played the original System Shock. I've I, after two, I booted it up and I was like, "This is a DOS game, um, <laughs> or early Windows game." And refurbished, it, it, refurbished. refurbished. <laughs> yeah, I just found it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so good. Yeah, uh, honestly, this is refurbished. Uh, yeah, this is a refurbished game. They put it back. They brought it back, fixed it up, and sold it again. Uh, it uh, yeah, it's fun. I like it. Uh, Goat Simulator Three. Karen and I found this game. Uh, uh, this hidden gem it sounded like it's not a hidden gem it's a very popular <laughs> game um, we found it so uh, put us down uh, it was on game pass so I installed it and on the main menu it just says hold X to join and I was like yes local co-op game uh, and so we played the entire game in about three days over the weekend uh, it is so good and so fun it is giant island GTA style it's not that big but a giant island and you are just, you can go off and do your own things, do your own quests, everything you work on, like you build together. So you're like total points are all together. You go and upgrade your castle inside the, um, uh, inside the goat towers. So as you rank up, you unlock new abilities and new rooms in the castle. Uh, it also opens with the Skyrim opening, uh, which is <laughs> absolutely wild. And, um, it's just fun. It's pure fun. There's like a hundred uh, different uh, clothing items in each category. So there's like headpieces, shoulders. You can change your fur. You can change uh, your pants. Uh, stuff stuff going on your back. And I like discovered one or two of them, and I'm like, oh, it's cool. They like have some of these in here. And I wasn't expecting it to be a big thing, but they just kept adding them. Uh, and so, like, it got to the point where, like, one ability, you can just lick things and turn them into eggs like Yoshi and then throw the eggs later on. So, like, any quest where you needed to collect things, instead of doing it one at a time, you would just get everything's in eggs and then bring them back and shoot all the eggs at the goal. Uh, and then there's, like, a Goss cannon, there's wings, there's rocket packs, um... At, uh, and then you can unlock different characters, so you can be a, a giraffe, which is called a tall goat. You can be the feather goat, which is a, a ostrich. There's a shark on a skateboard. Uh, there's a rhino. There's a banana mutant. Uh, and then finally, you can also unlock the game developer to play as, and you can just place <laughs> items around. Uh, it is absolutely fun. The ending... Uh, is really funny, and there's a giant boss fight at the end of the game. That is just like Dark Souls boss fight with stages, and it's it's absolutely wild. I highly recommend people to play it. It didn't take that long to go through the whole thing. Uh, it is just wacky and stupid in the correct ways. It's like the correct amount of all that. So I, mean, I think a lot like of people a... wrote it off as another goat simulator, and it is, but it's also really good. It sounds like a Gary's mod. I've never played any of the goat simulator stuff but it mm -hmm. sounds like a like a um a thought thought out and planned gary's mod experience where it's like a kind of random sure. experience but like thrown together in a way where it's like hey you can do all this stuff and it's actually fun and you don't have to like i don't know like it's all sort of a, just a big sandbox of goat fun stuff yeah and like shit goes wrong all the time but there's you can just respawn your character whenever you want and like half that stuff is hilarious oh there's there's a thing you can get to make people smarter and it just it just increases the size of an npc's head so and i guess the game only spawns a certain amount of npcs but it changes them like they're like the npc is the is the spot but it like changes the model or uh and the skin color like it just randomizes it whenever they spawn in and i had made a bunch of uh guys with huge heads like random people would like and they'd be like a little bit bigger than their body or like 50 meters across and i just kept doing it and then like the next day i just left it on quick resume and we went somewhere else and my children just started appearing everywhere <laughs> there would just be people with giant heads walking around but not the people i inflated so that's how i came to the conclusion like it must be respawning them uh and it was just like <laughs> driving around and someone in a car with a giant head going by and you're just like this game is amazing why 
why are not more people talking about it um well, yeah it's it's really stupid and i hate clearly it. i mean clearly the developer is a big fan of like the big head modes and yeah. like, the older games that used to have cheats and stuff like that i remember i think it was the spider-man the movie the video game with toby Maguire. That had a big head mode that was great. Uh, you could also play as the Green Goblin and like fly around on the glider. It was so cool. Um, but yeah, so I love stuff like that. And so uh, yeah, it sounds like it's, a nostalgia trip. I might have to check it out. I would really check it out. It's stupid. There's a lot of abilities that just do like the one stupid thing like that. Um, so I, I highly recommend it. It's every time you collect it, you're just like, oh, let me see what this does. So it's fun. Uh, also, that I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Halucha, for noticing my, my cardigan. It's very it is see, so nice i'm feeling the christmas spirit the christmas spirit fills you <laughs> as it does chris 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 kringle is inside me oh my goodness oh god <laughs> mrs claus i'm so sorry is that, are you on the nice list or the naughty list <laughs> undecided we'll, uh, we'll find out after tonight <laughs> the true dilemma <laughs> just santa it's like the meme with the two buttons put kyle on naughty or nice list <laughs> sweating <laughs> oh jealous of chris kringle yeah. i mean everyone's jealous of chris kringle you're gonna have to be more specific no. um kyle uh because i want to hear from you more than what i want to see what jake played uh wow <laughs> only because he played two games and one of them is two awful. games that... <laughs> and you played four games and one of them is awful yeah. Uh, Mixalumia is terrible. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's an awful, <laughs> awful video game. Um, please tell me about the games you've been playing this week. Uh, so Alan Wake 2, which I mentioned before, I just started, so I'm really only about 90 minutes into it. I haven't had a chance to get back to it. But as I said, uh, in the community Discord chat, if you guys are listening and you're not there, you should be there. Um, it is probably the best looking video game I've played yet. It is... I... It's honestly kind of breathtaking how visually dense everything is, but also like there's a real distinction in just the way that it presents uh, the storytelling beats. Like a lot of the camera angles, especially when you're in the mind palace or, or the mind, what is it called? The mind the place. Mind, place. The mind place. Sorry. So close. I'm getting rid of C's over here. Um, and uh, uh, it, it it just gives a very visually distinct and cinematic feel that uh is reminiscent of the original alan wake but i think also is they really have taken their remedy has really taken their time i think to to work on the presentation not feeling so like abrupt like in, in the original alan wake a lot of stuff was like really it was very fast it was happening really quickly and i was like i see what you're doing but you're not giving the story the time it needs to kind of breathe and and for those scenes that like it's like oh weird thing weird thing weird thing and i think with alan wake 2 the weirdness sort of creeps up or at least it's starting to creep up i mean i i basically stopped I, i've been taking my time and like searching everything like every time i get to like a new map or something i'm like okay i want to go off the beaten path and see what this game will allow me to do before i progress the story and it took me a while to actually get to the point where you are in the morgue and the thing happens that sort of sets sets things in motion for for uh saga and 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 uh what's his name sam lake alex, not sam lake alex casey alex casey yeah um and it it just felt like it had earned that that wow moment that that moment of like holy shit like what is going on what's happening more so than i think the original did so i'm i'm all in at this point i'm very excited to finish it and and see what other weirdness that i know is lurking just you know just in the next it chapter is. as jake jake has alluded to and and everyone else has don't understand how a musical number fits into oh boy buckle up the game <laughs> but uh very very willing to uh to 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 get there but yeah so that's out been alan wake 2 then of course uh everyone's favorite game except for ian lethal company uh <laughs> has been fantastic i love lethal company i actually spent i think it was like 45 minutes watching a uh a lore explanation video on youtube that explains all of the different monsters that people know about so far the purpose of or the the hypothetical purpose of the company 
what um, all of the logs that you can find say. And there's like a whole bunch of stuff and backstory that's crazy that's in the game, but you have to actually like look for it. Uh, and then on top of that, it's just a really fun, creepy, great community experience to play. I, I was saying this, I think I said it on stream, but like it, it's the best early access game experience I've ever had. Like I've never played a game that one, I, I think I had like one crash, maybe two crashes, but everything was so perfectly placed as far as like, hey, this sort of gameplay loop right here is going to affect this gameplay loop over here. And there's different ways you can sort of uh, go about completing the things you need to complete. And I think the fact that right off the bat, even in early access, there's mod support is great. Uh, and people have added a lot of really cool mods. Like there's, I I can't remember if the last time we played it, people talked about it, but there's the mod now that recreates people's voices uh, and and will like lead you yeah. astray. Or like there's an, like, like stuff like that is I think amazing. And I, I want to play more with more people and uh, it's it's just a really great time and it's super cheap. So, I mean, what's really not to like about it other than whatever Ian thinks, which is wrong. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, the man's I'm gonna, terrified. Yeah, <laughs> he's just terrified. It's not that scary. I I think like, he thinks it's like phasmophobia, and I think that's why. And I will I will never play phasmophobia again because it terrifies me. But there's something like inherently funny about Lethal Company that I think it's like, like there are terrifying the more moments. Presentation for one. Yeah. Um, just kind of like, goofy. Yeah, yeah, the the even just the running animation. Like, there's too many things that are next to the the scary bits that it's like it alleviates that sort of ultimate terror. I think if you're by yourself in one of the 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 sort of terminal areas where it's like you can find the items and you don't have a flashlight and it's late into the day, that's the scariest it's gonna get. But even then, as soon as something happens and you die, you're in the the room with other people who have died and and they're all laughing yeah. and it's like this the scariness does not last long enough to actually have an impact of like a horror game that's trying to go for that so and and I think like it's... i said this but alan wake 2 is far scarier than lethal company mm -hmm. eventually like and then um the fact that uh like you don't have to go into the buildings in lethal company is another thing you can just do. And then, yeah. you know, I think a little bit of it is, um, what was the name of that Viking, uh, Minecrafty game? I can't remember the name of it. it came out a few years Valhalla? ago. Valhalla? Not Valhalla. Or, uh, Valheim? Valheim. Thank you. I see. I kept saying Valhalla and I was like, that's not it. I thought Valheim. I thought you were, I thought you were joking. Cause you, you played that game so much. I, like I know. And I know. And, so I yeah. was like, couldn't think of the word i spent the whole time um ian wasn't into that at first and then zach and i played it and then he was like oh we'll play that so i think he'll eventually turn around but um yeah. it's not scary By the it's time also really fun. that happens we'll we'll all have stopped but playing it so maybe but. men in suits murdered his family and we and it's a triggering thing so we can't we can't force it no i i think you should play it because i think it would be fun to have him get scared on stream um and <laughs> uh no i i genuinely think he would like it so yeah. uh next game is just cyberpunk 2077 i'm trying to it, i'm so i've already beaten the game the the base game and i'm really just trying to get into the the new um uh what is it what is it called phantom what is liberty. the dlc phantom called liberty. phantom liberty i kept wanting to say pacific but that's one of the locations it's pacifica um i have not gotten into phantom liberty yet uh, but I'm working my way up. I think I'm level 20. I've got like six or seven hours in. I know kind of all the ins and outs of the base game, so I'm kind of speed running a lot of the stuff, but um, it's funny, Jake posted uh, your lovely classic <laughs> Cyberpunk 2077 <laughs> glitch that happened, which is something that happened on day one. Like day one, people were experiencing stuff exactly like that. Um, I... Other than a memory leak issue, which was patched immediately after the 2.1 patch came out, uh, I have not experienced any like glitches, which is a far cry from my experience playing the base game where I didn't have as bad a time as other people did. But I definitely was like noticing the fact that the game was in essentially unfinished, but it feels a lot more complete now. I do think sometimes like Jake 
your setup can just be the thing that causes it to go crazy or it's just a timing issue or like a loading issue. Um, I, I know people who have basically the same setup as me, but like one or two different components and they're like, oh, this game runs like trash or or, or it can be something as simple as that. So I don't know what to tell you other than keep going. <laughs> and <laughs> no, I, I mean, I definitely will. It was I was mostly just posting it there for the comic factor because beyond funny, that yeah. one bit that i'll talk about in a moment um that's been my only issue so far yeah yeah and I, was, there, I mean every well, what's up i was just gonna say and i was teasing as well <laughs> because i like I, I had an awful experience when that game came out as did a lot of people i still beat it um uh, because i'm a monster but um mm. i'm genuinely looking forward to diving back in i think i'm gonna just go straight for mm. phantom liberty um, mm. I almost said Phantom Pain, Phantom Liberty, and uh, actually, I'm just gonna play Phantom Pain. You could do Bane. that too. You could, I was <laughs> just gonna say, you could do that too. Kojima would be very happy. Let's go play uh, Good Outer Heaven. Uh, no, so no, I, I, I am really not looking dragging forward to Jake it. Alucha. <laughs> Alucha yeah, said I was dragging you, Jake. Jake. We've if, shitty if system. Anything, if anything, I'm dragging us because we <laughs> built Jake's system for him. <laughs> I mean, like you built it physically, but we put it together for you. I have to reveal at this moment that I have been playing on the Xbox. <laughs> oh, okay. well, there's well, your problem. Th there's your skill issue. That's that's <laughs> obviously the problem. Yeah, you should um, buy a better Xbox. Halucha keeps saying skill issue. You're you're absolutely right. Um, why you should be playing it on PC, or do you no. already own it on on Xbox? It was on sale in the ah, Microsoft okay. Store. Um, so the or the version that has the base game and Phantom Liberty um, was on sale. And so I was like, okay. oh, I can just grab it there. Cool. Um, but uh, no, I know I should be. I mean, I should have played Alan Wake on my computer as well. You're and missing same. out. Even yeah. even without. I mean, I turned off RTX on Alan Wake 2. It still looks like incredible. Like really that old man ass at the at the very beginning. <laughs> breathtaking. It was pretty rough on Xbox for a bit. I actually stopped playing it like too because it was so rough. Um, really? With it. I mean, oh. it's got it's got a lot of like lighting issues, especially in New oh. York. All the shiny stuff, the like little dots and all that sort. Like, really? I haven't gotten there yet, but really? Oh, Wait, which I, Xbox are you playing on? On the Series X. I'm playing on the S. Hmm. And I, I mean, I, I mean, maybe 4K? I internalized that. Yes. I guess you are. Familiar. Maybe I internalized that as just like an artifact of the Northlight engine because it was similar um, when I played Control on the PS4. It had that same kind of yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a hundred percent a Northlight thing, but it's still there. Yeah, like I, I think oh, if if it was a little bit more powerful, yeah, like on a PC, I think it, w it would eliminate that. Uh, well, um, but I I play Control on the Xbox and I played Alan Wake Two on the Xbox. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, overall it's still stunning yeah i mean it looks it looks great uh on my computer even without all the fancy bits and and pieces that digital foundry get to play with but uh yeah so uh, eventually i will beat phantom liberty and i will have experienced idris elba in a virtual reality uh which is a far cry from the, my current physical reality in which i have not experienced idris elba but um yeah, so other than Cyberpunk 2077, the last game that I have played is South Scrimshaw, South Scrimshaw Part 1, which was a uh, Jake Jacob Terrio recommendation. Right, by these air quotes, but I know exactly why you're <laughs> using them. I The only reason I say is because I turned, I, I installed it and got to the main menu and then turned it off because I didn't have enough time to play it. I just wanted to make sure that it ran. Oh. But, I, it was okay. not what you were thinking. That's why I was like, you don't need to be worried. I just were like, technically, I hit the play <laughs> button on Steam. Okay. Um, I, I have been, it's funny, you, I saw the recommendation on the list and then, I don't know, maybe Google sold my, my browsing history really quickly because immediately after I installed it, I started getting uh, stuff on Twitter about people who have played it. And they've been like, oh, it's this great, like, documentary-esque video game about like a whale or something and i was like this is not what i thought it was but i literally know nothing other than apparently it's a documentary-esque video game about a whale so uh very excited for that because who doesn't love whales and uh yeah it'll good. probably be it'll probably be game of the year i mean honestly just just from yeah. that God, there's I an argument so. for it for sure <laughs> 
I mean, the argument is whether or not it's a video game because if it's a video Ian's game, it's game of the it. year. <laughs> that means that means it should. If Ian hates it, that means it should be game of the year. <laughs> we have to bully him into making South Scrimshaw game of the year. We'll give Ian credit. Uh, yeah. he, he was on board with Pentiment, which means he's halfway to South Scrimshaw. That's true. And I didn't understand yeah, the mechanic in now. Pentiment of clicking on the red words. So, <laughs> uh, okay. wait, there were red words. No, I'm just kidding. Um, but yeah, those are my games. So, uh, Jake, we're we're back to you. Uh, Let's go, Jake. Yeah, Mixalumia is one of my evening couch games, and I finally broke my high score. I don't know if I've talked. I'm sure I've talked about Mixalumia at some point. But, You've um, talked about Mixalumia. Don't know. worry about it. Uh, I'm sorry, I can't remember Kyle. if you talked about it to me in person with Kyle or on a pod because I think we talked about it at Extra Life. I don't remember. But I don't remember if that was talked pre about or post stream or during well, stream. You, you played it at Extra Life, right? Didn't you no, bring it up your, for a little I bit? I played it at your house before Will's wedding. That's when I no, showed no, it. No, 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 you played it at Extra Life at like 2 in yeah. the morning? Yeah, it was oh, really early. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. I think you only, because you were you were it's talking, it, you were showing it, I think you were showing it to Ian and Will because you were dead they inside, went to bed. For sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. And, uh, yeah uh, well, yeah. yeah, broke my high score. Um, and so now I just have to, now I got to run it back, back to one, go again. <laughs> now, Halucha said that do. you played it, so you really did. Okay. Okay. I think we should do competitive Mixalumia next year. <laughs> Ranked. Loser gets tased. I'm not, I'm not worried. I mean, I know you'll win, but I'll do okay. So. No, I won't play for like, oh, well, it's like six months prior. Oh, oh, I won't you're gonna, play. oh okay. I thought you're gonna you were going to say you're going to give us a handicap or something. No, yeah. no. I'll force myself not to play it for months. Um, and then I also, as Kyle alluded to, I have also been playing Cyberpunk 2077. And yeah, the only glitch that happened, which I think was just a, it was a mixture of a timing problem and then the AI pathfinding with those <laughs> cars is terrible. Because <laughs> um, it was the, it was driving to like the, the heist of Act mm -hmm. One. Um, or at least I don't know if it's, it's like the prologue, different. basically. Yeah. But is it different? Like, does every one of the three starter characters all end up at that hotel narratively? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The they they said <laughs> the individual missions for each of the three life paths is the prologue. It's not. It's like it's like uh, the first ten minutes. There, there's like no different. It's like, yeah, five to ten minutes of mm -hmm. getting into Night City, and then there's the cinematic where you see all the cool stuff that you want to do with Jackie mm -hmm. in the rest of the game that you don't get to actually do. Everyone mm -hmm. experiences that no matter what the life path is. Okay. So. So yeah, it was on the way to the heist when when the the like AI taxi cab service is taking you there. And I just noticed at one point, I don't know if it had missed a turn or if another car had been in the way or something, but suddenly he was like trying to like make a U-turn and running <laughs> into stuff and then like zoomed off the overpass <laughs> down into like the like the alleyway below it and was trying to climb up the wall to get back no. to like the the, the driveway Delamay, around no, the hotel buddy and so i had to i had to reload to the beginning mm. of that sequence so i only lost like three minutes but it was just yeah. like comically but it, it terrible. worked it worked after that right like it wasn't like a continuous yeah. thing that you were running into okay. yeah i can't um, believe that's yeah, not on rails it's that's like very wild. weird that it's not because that was my thought. I'm like, how would how how are they allowing it to go this wrong? Like why? Yeah, why would you let that? It seems like an easy fix. I mean, I I'm not a game developer, so I can't say that. But like, how is that sequence where you're not allowed to get out of the car, not on rails, unless it is, and like the rails didn't turn on for you? Like that's the only thing I could think of. No, because I think it's a matter of it can't it can't 100 percent be on rails because of the timing of you having the conversation in the car, mm. um, which I don't know if that was the problem. Oh, like true. maybe I like waited too long for some of the responses or something, but I don't know, but I made it there and now I'm into, I'm a couple missions into act two. So, so Keanu Reeves is there and we're hanging out. And we're loving life. Um, have you, have you met Takemura? The best character in that game. He's the one that the uh, old, the old uh, bodyguard. Of... Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah. Takamura is the best. He's he's great. I'm right see... now. 
query. <laughs> did you see? <laughs> yeah. you, uh, did you see Hideo Kojima? Kojima? Yes, I did see that at the hotel. I have not seen. Oh, was he? Oh, was he at I the saw him. I saw him for the first time on this playthrough. I had never I seen him, him before. That's so. the only reason I want to start the game over at the beginning is to see him because I missed him the one time I played it, and I'm so yeah. mad. Um, no, yeah, yeah, I missed him. Right now, I I'm still hunting have not for found, uh, um, Evelyn. Oh, oh, Evelyn, Evelyn. Uh, I know Alana Pierce is in that game. Never found oh. her. Still have She's not have not the found desert, her. I thought. Is she? Oh, I know the oh, two what guys are in the Oh. What, what, life, what path life path did you choose? Oh, Corpo. I, I wanted to uh, <laughs> like play a scumbag if I was going to play in this horrible world. That's that's that was my first one that I on my base playthrough, and then I did Nomad, and I don't even know what the other one is. Street Kid. It's like you're yeah. already in Night City. Like, why would you? I don't know. It sounds you're lame like, too. Yeah. Like I'm a street kid. Yeah. Like it sounds like a. Well, it's like you're a weird commercial. Like, you you basically become a street kid. If you mm -hmm. choose either of the other options, mm -hmm. so it's like, why would I? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I, if I, as long as I was role playing in this uh, grimy, hyper capitalist hellscape, I'm like, yeah, I'll go, I'll do Corpo. That mm -hmm. seems fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, I hate to interrupt. Uh, yeah, that's what I've been saying. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry. No, no, no. Uh, I hate to interrupt, but I'm also, done. I hate, uh, I hate to interrupt. But also, I hate this for audio listeners, but Kyle, is that the Reliant K Christmas album vinyl behind your head? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It is. Oh, that's fantastic. I I need that. Now I need to own that. I hate that. That means they... <laughs> oh, no, he was listening to it, too. <laughs> oh, it's green and you red. Need this. It's so good. Oh man! Sorry, everyone. We all grew up listening to Christian rock. <laughs> <laughs> it's unfortunate, but uh, man, I need to get that, Kyle. That's beautiful. I need to get that really and good. and mm hmm, uh, because mm -hmm. I have a fantastic album. I see what you did there, Jake. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hate saying mm -hmm. that album because you just look like a weirdo. <laughs> hey, have you listened to? <laughs> but it's mm -hmm. it's literally like their top three albums. So, oh, I. Oh. Man, yeah. Sometimes that music just hits right. It's it's so good. It's so I still need to know. Genius. I recommended those seven or ten concept albums to you, and I got oh. feedback on some of them during Extra Life, and I didn't know if you ever listened I, to the rest of them. You know, I haven't gone back. I've gone back to like I think I did one more since I've been back, but I haven't gone fully back, only because I've been like doing so much work that I mm -hmm. like because I was listening to them during during work. Uh, and I could really pay attention to them, but recently I've been just doing so much work that it's just like I just put on lo-fi for the day so I Fair. can like get through stuff. So I do and and that's partly because I wanted to give those albums like actual listening time. Um, oh, I know I get it. And those I am those the same first like four or five I listened to was when I was was the day I had off and I was building that Napoleon art piece diorama. And so I just had that on a speaker in my pocket walking around uh, <laughs> listening to all these crazy albums. Uh, but they are good so far. I I think I like the Yes ones the most. Um, yeah. I was. It's weird. I was talking to Ian about them too. I forgot an Extra Life. Because he was playing... Yes has a lot of experimental like stuff, right? Oh, yeah. The early stuff's wild. Yeah. Yeah, whatever you sent me was good. Like, there were one or two where I was like... <laughs> It's like first I can never give my first listen impressions because they're usually wrong. Like there's a couple albums from uh like specifically Bon Iver's uh, Millions album that I hated the first time I listened to. Uh mm. is it 33 Millionaire, whatever it's called. Um and then uh on subsequent listens this is like one of my favorite albums now. But it's just like I want to listen to them all twice before I before I tell you about them. But also, I never listen to music anyway, so that's that's my life. I've been listening to Japanese city pop, okay? <laughs> like, Zoom. Dude. Uh, okay, you, it's funny you say that. I just found, I shouldn't say just found, like six months ago, I found this band, um, Sakan Action, or Sak Sakan, Sakan Action. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, they're really, really good. And ooh. their one music video is like a amazing 1980s like throwback and the it, it's it's really really good i'm gonna i'm gonna link in the yes yeah, uh, send that to me community I'll, chat I'll, right now 
I'll send the video through that I've been listening to while writing, actually, which is 30 minutes of Japanese 80s city pop Christmas music. And it's insanely good because they're just singing in Japanese. You know what the what the hell they're talking about. And then it'll be I don't mean that in a bad way, uh, but I just mean I don't speak Japanese. And then they'll be like, December 24th. And you're like, why are those the two English words? It's like, like out of all of the stuff. Uh, no, or like, it's like you hear a lot of baby and goodbye. Yeah. Like, and it's a lot of like, yeah. and then there was like Silent Night, Holy Night was a riff. And then another song was all Japanese except for Christmas. And it's just like, <laughs> fuck yeah. Like singing to me. Uh, it's so good. And the, uh, yeah, I'll send the video through. the The songs are all wild too, because it's like male and female singers, and it's like what must be Japan's Frank Sinatra with the, like this deep, gravelly voice singing, and you're just like, "Dude, you're awesome!" awesome. Uh, it's very fun. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's the that's the weird world I've been living in, folks. Uh, it's time for the news. Let's hit this real quick. Not a ton of news this week. Uh, this first one I thought was relatively interesting. Uh, originally, um. Chris Avalon, Avalon, um, creator of Fallout New Vegas, um, Fallout, not Fallout, uh, was he on Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 as well? I don't know. Storied RPG director, game director, uh, who, uh, worked at Obsidian, uh, and, uh, helped make Fallout New Vegas, uh, was saying that they had pitched... Was he? Okay. He had pitched uh, Bethesda, or their team had pitched Bethesda making the Fallout New Vegas, but for Elder Scrolls. Uh, and unfortunately, they didn't get to do it. They're, all their ideas were rejected. Um, but he kind of explains, like, it could have been what Treyarch did for Activision with the, like, in-between Call of Duty games. These could be in-between Elder Scrolls, in-between Fallout. And it's funny, with hindsight, um, Fallout New Vegas being one of the best Fallout games like them taking a whack at an Elder Scrolls, like I'd probably be praising that game instead of Oblivion or uh, <laughs> I don't praise Skyrim, but uh, Skyrim's at least long lasting. Um, yeah, it's kind of wild. I by force. <laughs> yeah. yeah I force like of Skyrim. Will. No, Skyrim's great. Skyrim's great. I also like Skyrim, but it's not, I mean, it's not Fallout New Vegas. We can, we can at least. I've, I've never played Fallout New oh, Vegas. God. You gotta play Fallout New Vegas. It's so good. It's so extremely it's good. Okay. So good narratively. <laughs> there you go. No. It's fine. It's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> it's one of the best video games ever made. Wow. Um, but it was you also... You missed a golden, a golden opportunity to plug your video, Jake. I'm, I'm Which one? I'm upset about, that you didn't. About, about Pentiment? Uh, yeah. Yeah, because you talk about Fallout New Vegas in that one. I do talk about Fallout New Vegas in mm. in our video about, and the, we talked the, about Pentiment. So like the choosing yeah. choosing options in Pentiment. Yeah. Ah, awful. Awful. Um, yeah, you could. Um, you know, I will agree though, Kyle. The same thing you said about Alan Wake, which is also from 2010. It is a 13 year old game, so I can see that with yeah. Fallout New Vegas. But narratively, a thousand percent, it is a fantastic, fantastic video game. Can um, I just read it? Is there a Fallout New Vegas book? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Like a, cho a choose your not, own adventure book. It'd you, be like this big. You're not going to get the great voice acting of the late uh, Here, just Chandler the Bing, book. Matthew Perry. Okay. Yeah, that'll, that'll do it. That'll do it. Oh, Matthew Perry's in it? Wow. Uh, amongst okay. others. There's a oh. lot of folks in that game. Colonel Ty, I think, is in it. What if don't it was just Matthew Perry? Name. It's every, every role. <laughs> you know, he like loved Fallout so much he asked to be in it. Uh, wow. Which I think he liked Fallout 1 and 2. I don't know if he liked 3. <laughs> 3 is very <laughs> divisive. Um, well, that's like that's like Ethan Hawke was saying all he wants to do before he dies is be in a Star Wars movie. And I was like, now? <laughs> <laughs> like, still want to do really? that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen them? Yeah. Ethan Hawke should play the Ebon Hawke. From the he, voice of the, the Ebon Hawk from the Knights of the Old Republic. Yeah, from yeah. Knights of the Old Republic. He should just be it. And he like opens his mouth and they climb in. And they like paint him up. They paint him up to make him look like it. It's not silly. I like how I like how you <laughs> Okay, I get it. I get it. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, it looks real, Kyle. Don't this is <laughs> Star Wars. <laughs> 
Don't be stupid. Sorry. Um, moving on here, uh, this is the other news topic for the week. Uh, Insomniac uh, suffers devastating leak after ransom demands. Um, this was my Marvel. This is my Spider-Man 2, looming Spider-Man 2 joke from Illusion from earlier. Um, this group demanded uh, 50 Bitcoin from Insomniac <laughs> Games, which is around $2 million within seven days. And after but the it'll deadline be worth $15 passed... dollars tomorrow. Pardon? It'll be worth $15 tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. That's a good joke. Um, <laughs> the, after the deadline passed, the hackers followed up on their threat, <laughs> and they released 1.67 terabytes of information related to upcoming Insomniac projects. Um, you know, this sucks. Um, I'm not going to get into the explosive journalistic integrity debate that came out of today. Um, we talked about it in the Discord a little bit, and I didn't. it didn't get heated in the Discord, but... I was just saying, cover the leak news-wise, but don't dig into it and be like, hey, like, there was stuff about their upcoming projects, when they're coming out, stuff like that. And and personal emails and personal uh, employee records and stuff like that, to me, that's not worth digging through because you're just exposing people's personal information. And even yep. the, I think it's interesting to see the, like, upcoming stuff. Uh, it sucks that all of Wolverine was spoiled uh, and out there. I think that stuff's interesting, but inherently, even if this leak didn't happen, most of that stuff was probably going to change. And especially now that that leak has happened, probably a lot of that stuff on all of it is going to change. So to me, there's not a huge point in like looking through it because it's already gone information. But I think on top of it, the fact that this was stolen information, ransomed information, and then was leaked or was released is different than them accidentally uploading the YouTube trailer and, and putting it out early or something like that. So um, whether it's against journalistic integrity to cover, I don't agree with that. Like you should cover everything. That's how it is. Um, well, I, I think the distinction like you sort of alluded to that other people have been saying is the news story is that a leak occurred. A exactly. hack occurred. Yep. But yeah, the, the contents therein is that's not, what's newsworthy it's the fact that you know insomniac was hacked into yeah, yeah it's just a, it's just the difference of uh, like an article that's basically just a headline of like oh i didn't realize that insomniac got a leak and then if you read the article it's like oh here's exactly what got leaked and here's the details of this game that's coming out in two years it's like you don't need any of that you, exactly. you really don't that's um been, yeah and, and if you I, want that I, you can find it pretty easily <laughs> Sure. Yeah. I mean, people are going to post it. It's the internet. But I think that for some of the bigger, I mean, like IGN and Polygon and I forget who else covered it, but like they were actually doing articles about the leaks specifically, I think is, I mean, it just put, not that games journalism has uh, much of a shining light in it uh, anymore. I don't really know if it ever did, but because there's such a tight um, communication, a line of communication between developers and studios and um game journalism like it, it you can have something like uh, uh what did david say kotaku and uh bethesda where it's like hey we're just not gonna let you cover our games anymore i don't think insomniac would necessarily do that because of this mm -hmm. but it leads you it, it leads audiences to have an expectation now that one leaks are going to happen which is terrible but they do but also the expectation that the details are going to be found out years in advance and yeah some of the stuff might change but a lot of that stuff had already been worked on for three years or, or you know at least two years and that's a lot of people's hard work and especially having it happen alongside a a dump of personal information like the, i read that there were like passport uh, records and photos and stuff like that. Some social security stuff like that's that's a gut punch and a slap to the yeah. face at the same time. And it's it's not fair to the developers to have that happen at all. And then it's equally unfair for sites to be, in my opinion, to to actively be making money off of posting details about that stuff. Again, post the headlines all you want. I don't want to know any of that stuff. But I'm happy to to be aware that a leak happened at Insomniac. I'm I'm even okay finding out like, hey, specifically stuff about like, don't give me details about the stuff, but you can say stuff about this game leaked. That way, at least I know it's out there. But like to actively be posting the details of said stuff, I think 
is the wrong move. And the fact that a lot of big, one, like a lot of uh, <laughs> editors in chiefs seem to be okay with doing that is really discouraging. But two, I, I just think that it it puts a big damper on the games industry professionally and and like morally. So that's that's my piece. But yeah, I was I was kind of uh, not to go too far into it, but proud that GameSpot. Uh, and Tam was just like, we we're like, hey, it's new. Yep. Exactly what you said, Kyle. We're like, the news is the leak, and we're not going to go further than that. Like, there's no point. And for a lot of the reasons you said, and that this morning was just like, oh, good. Like, I'm glad we're kind of like, not that we're good and there other people are bad, but it's just like, oh, you know what? That's a good, nice place to stand, and I'm totally okay yeah. with it. Um, yeah, uh, I was also going to say that the other thing is like gamer gamers people who read gaming news and play video games also suck a lot. And like, that's why developers don't often talk about making games because they mention one little thing. And five years later, someone, everyone complains. Why isn't that thing you showed off five years ago in the game? Uh, and that's what I'm like with movies and stuff, you get leaks, but you don't often get people being like, why wasn't that in the movie? Where was that character or stuff like that? Versus this is like, there's so much in this when the game Wolverine comes out, they're going to be like, why didn't you keep that story beat? That was my favorite story beat from the leak. Why didn't you keep that one? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't you do that? Why don't you have like specific mechanics in the leaked videos? Why aren't those in there? So like to have that as an extra thing of weight for them when that game comes out just sucks because it would be better in like 20 years when some of the director of that game's like, Hey, we had this whole system that, w but we scrapped it. It would have been awesome. But now that whole system's out there. And if they do scrap it, people are going to be pissed off for some crazy reason. Cause they think they deserve what was cut from the game. You know, it's not, I mean, it's not, it's not fair. It's, it's, it's an unfair argument to try and make that when it's like, well, you shouldn't have known about this stuff anyway. Right. But like, but my my thing is, uh, was it a year ago or more when GTA Six leaked? Um, I, I want to say more than a year. Like yeah. it was like a like year like October. Summer. Yeah, so it was like a year and a year and a couple months, right? Yeah. I don't think, and maybe it's out there, and my my timeline, which has significantly changed since Elon Musk's takeover of Twitter, um, I don't remember seeing the same amount of vitriol that insomniac is seeing from people about the leaks and i think it's because gta is, is like a known quantity at this point like you know what you're getting when you see gta people were not complaining about the fact that it was like oh this is a third person game like gta a third person game like <laughs> yeah no shit um people are complaining about the fact that wolverine is third person and i'm like were you expecting like an a isometric, like top down or like an RTS? Like what, what exactly were you expecting? Which I would be down for. I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, but it's like people, I one <laughs> people want something to be argue, uh, to, to argue about online, which is you know, per the course for Twitter and all internet communications from now to the end of time. But <laughs> I think it's un it's unfair that people are like, why does this game look so bad? It's because it's pre-alpha, you fucking idiot. Like, like, what are you, what are you expecting? And they're like, this game doesn't look that bad. Yeah, and and I, I don't, I don't think the average person online is very smart, and it's not for a lack of understanding, like how games are made. I think they just want to be mean. Like, they just there's like an inherent sort of menace to a lot of people's posting where. That that reactionary stuff, you know, we can talk about it to the cows come home, but it's like that's that's the culture now. But it's Hell, just really a very long video about this. We what? You and I both just received a long video about this. Oh, about yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe maybe deliberately mean. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. Um, but it, it's just really, I think, sad to see that turn against a developer that has up to this point been absolutely beloved by the community. And now immediately as something bad happens to that, people are thinking badly about Insomniac or at, at least that sort of stuff is trending. And I it just it just pisses me off. Like, I don't I don't feel good about loving an industry and being technically a part of an industry that like that's the default reaction to a lot of people. And I don't know. It just makes me sad. So. Yeah, 
I'm I, I, I'm I, I'm a fan of Insomniac, so I I don't want their hard work to go to immediately be undone. But yeah. yeah. It sucks. Uh, and I agree with you. I, it's funny. You may remember when those Rockstar leaks happened. I distinctly remember people on Twitter complaining about the like dev tool overlays in the leaked footage being like, <laughs> why would they put that in the game? It's just like, oh my God. I would literally die. Um, and the second thing I want to say like, is, <laughs> is you pointed out a good thing about like saying like people are just like automatically negative with stuff because recently I've caught myself when like someone mentions a game in discord and I want to, and I didn't enjoy it as much. I want to like rag on it, but then I'm like, oh, you know what? That's probably not the best thing to constantly do. Like, even if I don't like with the, like the cyberpunk thing, like I don't mean that, but then I don't want people to think I mean that versus if I actually hated cyberpunk, I would say something mean about it. And it's just like, what's the point of that? Like, am I trying to diminish someone's like of a thing I don't like? Um, that's a conversation for another yeah. podcast. <laughs> yeah, I think I think it's it's OK. It's OK to like it's f absolutely fine to joke about stuff. And like, yeah. yeah, like, oh, like Cyberpunk sucks. Ha ha ha. Like as in like, hey, there's a lot of positives about that game right now. Um, but I just think that the, the constant negativity and piling on and ragging mentality is just killing yeah. like any goodwill. Like what? Like, honestly, why would you want to make games? I, like a hundred percent like why why would you want to make video games right now <laughs> like it's so toxic and i it, like god bless the people who are actually doing it because i you know i think about writing a script and i'm like well i don't i don't want anyone to read this and there are people out there who like jake who are putting stuff out there constantly and it's really good <laughs> and like like that that say what you want about how terrible jake's writing is but like that takes a lot of courage um to do stuff like that and like i have my old short films from college like you could go find them on you we should have a stream where we all no, we're gonna do our the old Pixel stuff film yeah. Festival, yeah yeah where um, we go through <laughs> all, all the highlights from our youth i think that would be great actually um but like all that stuff's out there and it's it you know it's not perfect and it's got flaws and that's the whole point of it but when the mentality is sort of digging into those flaws and bringing them up and throwing them in your face as soon as possible, as loudly as possible, it's super discouraging. So God bless the people who make video games and I love you all, except for, I don't know, uh, who made the witness. <laughs> Jonathan Blow. <laughs> Jonathan Blow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the guys who made the case of the golden idol <laughs> and and the guy yeah, yeah, yeah no even they have their place in hell good because i'm making a sequel i'm very excited straight from golden game idol. of the year game of the year for next year 2024 <laughs> it'll be that versus pony island 2 <laughs> oh it's gonna be pony island no pony island 2 said 20 it didn't have a specific date it said 24 or 25 oh we've got daniel mullins on here to talk about it we i'm gonna need him, him on local chat please do I yeah, we should get them on here. That'd be really fun. And then can we get the house house people to talk uh, about Big they, Walk? So oh, I, I don't know if you remember, but very early in Subpixels Life Cycle, yeah. I did email them to see about a documentary. And they They're like, said, We're really they responded busy. something along the lines. No, it was along the lines of like, oh, we you know, appreciate the interest, but we prefer to stay out of the limelight and just make yeah. games. I'm like, that's totally fair. What I about the it. lemon light? Well, they like to the lemon light. <laughs> Maybe that's they have scurvy. Joke. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe that's changed, <laughs> but they might just not be doing a lot of press stuff. Yeah. We should. We Which, should. again, circling back, why would you? <laughs> why? Why, you, why? Why would you put yourself out there like that? Yeah. Oh, that's what I was going to say. I, I, Sorry not to belabor this anymore, but it was Ethan... Okay, Lethal Company. Fantastic video game. And I would say whatever Ian's issues with it, I don't think he would say the developers are horrible people or stuff like that no. like, it's, it, hate the game not the developers um but even that i saw a post the other day was like people when they find out the developer of lethal company is a furry and it was just like some weird gift i'm like who the fuck cares games who fun cares? is all hell like I, what, what do you mean like who cares this game were made by a person <laughs> <laughs> who wears a fursuit sometimes yeah. like I think, I just... well, and the amount of, it's funny, there have been 
several big news stories in 2023 that have happened because of furries. Like there was that yeah. big, um, there was like a big leak of something governmental, um, which is always good in my opinion. Leak whatever you want about the government, uh, except on War Warframe or War. The oh, whatever <laughs> world of tanks yeah. stop, stop doing forest. stop doing it on world of tanks do it somewhere <laughs> else but um uh there was like a th there was like a couple other news stories where it was like this 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 happened dot 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 and the person was a furry and i'm like furries are they're powerful and they're rich there's like a lot of rich people in the furry community so i you know more power to furries you know, keep and keep making games like Lethal Company. I don't give a shit where they come from. I, I want to play good games. Yeah. Fuck know. yeah. Um, play good games. Furries rule too. And they make good games, so so you can't do anything about it. You, um, play, you play a lot of furry games? Yeah. Uh, well, I play a lot of games made by furries. Um, oh, okay. Okay. Right. So furry games. You're right. <laughs> you know, you got me there. Um, folks, that's going to be. A oh, no. Oh, no. Oh no, that's See, not. I was about it. to segue into this, Will. I was going to say, speaking of good games, and then cue <laughs> oh. it up to you, but it's too oh. late. Oh, okay. You just have that's, to go. That's right, Jake. Speaking of good games, um, this week's Steam Wishlist Spotlight, sponsored not by Steam, but by my very eyeballs. Folks, this game is called Abiotic Factor. Um, I Googled that to find this game, and it is actually a thing. Uh, I'm going to Google it again to see what that is, because that, that'd that be fun to see. That'd be fun to see. It's a non-living part of an ecosystem that shapes its environment. Uh, that's the abiotic factor, in case you didn't know that. This is a survival crafting experience for one to six players set in the depths of an underground research facility. Um, think the scientists from Half-Life, but you play as them. And instead of, like, cutting down trees, picking up rocks, picking up sticks, you're picking up crazy scientific experiments and shoving them together to make more crazy scientific experiments um i believe you're going through different and worlds you with crafting um and like crafting traps and and uh drinking coffee and like playing with friends and i believe the mouth moves like in half-life when you talk as your character uh which i think is super fun um just scrolling through the steam list there's just so much stuff put together here um, this looks really good i just wish this it it looks great yeah it looks awesome there there is a beta currently um i think it's off steam i think you just have to join their discord or there's a playtest open <laughs> in their announcements it request access on oh steam. it does say request access Ooh, i should i'm just gonna hit that i'm button. gonna do that access yeah, granted that right i'm now. in the playtest <laughs> oh it just says yeah, play now oh god nice. the trailer's playing um oh, it just says play now folks it says play now let's um, hop in boys oh we should stream this next week that'd be fun yeah let's do it um yeah so that's the abiotic factor check it out on steam wishlist it and let them know they want we want let let they know that we want them games uh do it or you're We're putting you're that fired. on a t-shirt <laughs> putting that on a t-shirt um we should try to we should start a t-shirt ideas channel that we're only we're allowed to post in and you just write the idea that way you, we have you just one. reminded me you just reminded me my sister asked me to make a t-shirt for the department of justice and i have to do that so thank the you doj she, my sister works for the doj Biden so doj draft she dodgers in the, in the white house partially so uh, was she in the car with yeah. joe when he got hit today Today he got hit again. Was that today or was no, it yesterday? yesterday oh, it was yesterday. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Get him um, on the podcast. Yeah. Joe. No. <laughs> Joe. He he's I have a letter from Joe sure. when he was only a vice president. Well, my, my I shouldn't. I probably shouldn't. Actually, no. I'm not going to say this. I'll say it off the stream. But what are her security clearance? <laughs> I think she, I don't know. <laughs> she can read files. I don't well, know. President can declassify anything at any time. So <laughs> it's true. That's just a matter. So can of your sister. <laughs> She's perfect. I guess. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, folks. Uh, that is going to be the show. I'm going to hit the outro. And we're going to get the hell out of here. Uh, we will be back this Thursday playing Lego Fortnite. I won't be there because I'll be in Utah, the great state of nothing. Uh, so uh, these three are going to play that. And by three, I mean those two. And the gremlin named Ian will be playing Lego Fortnite. I'm extremely jealous because I wanted to play that. 
it's and fun. I wish it's a lot of fun. I wish we just didn't have local chat because we would have played that tonight. But no, we don't have local chat every week. Um, and then uh, this weekend, I don't think we're doing anything because of Jesus's birthday. Uh, happy birthday, Jesus! Shout out to you. You're a real one. Um, or are you? Uh, and then Tuesday, I'm not sure what we're doing. I will still be in Utah, uh, sad and alone. Uh, but have a Merry Christmas, everyone. Jake and Kyle, thanks for being here. I love both of you very much. Have a great Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we'll see you all on Thursday. Bye!